Hi, Mark Donovan here from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to go over the topic of weight and balance. Uh, we're going to focus on describing what weight and balance is relative to an aircraft, why do we care, how it affects flight operations, and then lastly, we'll go through the process of actually filling out a weight and balance form. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about this video, just leave them below. Okay, so weight and balance. So why is an aircraft weight and balance so important? While the weight and balance are key factors in the design, performance, and stability of the aircraft under various flight operating conditions. In this example here, if you see the plane has um, a load in it that may not be properly distributed along the length of the uh, fuselage, you may end up with a plane that has not exceeded max ramp weight, but the balance of it is obviously um, shifted toward the back of the aircraft. So balance is maintained uh, for the aircraft through the center of gravity, whose location determines the overall characteristics of the aircraft. The center of gravity position is affected by the total weight and the distribution of it throughout the aircraft. Weight and parameters ensure that the wings and overall structure are able to support the aircraft throughout all flight envelopes. So prior to every flight, pilots must determine the weight and the balance to ensure that the aircraft is operating in accordance with the manual. So we could have a situation where if we're in excess weight, we might cause structural damage to the aircraft or if the weight is not properly distributed, we might find out that we're not able to control the aircraft properly uh, through all flight uh, operations. So operating an aircraft above its max weight limitation co compromises the structural integrity of the aircraft and adversely affects its overall performance. Uh, with excess weight, we have reduced flight performance in almost every possible respect. Higher takeoff speeds, longer takeoff runs, reduced rate and angle of climbs, lower maximum altitude, shorter range, reduced cruising speed, reduced maneuverability, higher stalling speed, and higher approach and landing speeds, and longer landing rolls. Balance, or the center of gravity compliance, is critical for aircraft flight safety. Operating an aircraft outside its center of gravity envelope limits the control and aircraft safety results. A center of gravity that's too far forward uh, would result in a more stable aircraft, meaning if it was to get into a stall situation, it's more recoverable. However, all the things in red are negative. There's uh, higher stall speeds. The plane will actually stall at a much faster speed than normal with a forward CG. Slower cruise speed because of a higher angle of attack. Possibly insufficient elevator nose up to flare. Greater elevator back pressure required on the yoke. Poor climb and more fuel and time consumed. With an aft center gravity, there's a lot of good looking things there in green, but there's one very bad one. Uh, with a very aft CG, the aircraft is less stable, such that if you do get into a stall, uh, most likely going to be in a spin and have a recovery that's impossible to get out of. So um, the good aspects of an aft CG, lower stall speed, meaning you won't slow to a much slower um, sl slower um, airspeed than, than a normal situation, because you're going to have a lower angle of attack. You'll have a higher cruise speed, lower angle of attack, faster speed, and less fuel. But again, if you find yourself getting into a stall, your chances of getting out of it um, are significantly reduced. So in order to do a weight and balance, which we're, which we're trying to ultimately get to here, we need to understand some key definitions of terms. So the datum is the area that the manufacturer designs as the reference point for all measurements um, when it's comparing various stations along the length of the aircraft. The stations are places such as the pilot seat, the back passenger seat, the baggage, the fuel area, all of those were represented uh, by the term station. The moment arm is the horizontal distance from the datum point to any one of those stations. And the moment is the item weight multiplied by its moment arm. So if we, for example, see a 10 pound weight at station 70, the moment is the multiplication of the arm length, 70 inches times 10, to give us 70, 700 inch pounds in this example. The center of gravity is the point at which you could balance the item on, for example, your fingertip if it could hold up the, the weight of a plane. Um, there are center of gravity forward and aft range limits. Um, these locations are specified in the manufacturer's um, pilot operating handbook. And basically, as long as you do a center of gravity calculation with the CG coming out so that it's within those range limits, as you see here, 
the aircraft is going to be able to be able to be operated throughout all of its normal flight operations, climbs, descends, cruise flight. Um, item weight. We have to also keep in mind that we need to do it for weight and balance. We need to know what the total weight of the plane is, the pilot, the passengers, the fuel, and the baggage on board. And the basic empty weight is the standard empty weight of the plane plus installed optional equipment. So how do we go about calculating aircraft's weight and balance? Well, we need a few tools. We need the aircraft's pilot operating handbook with the weight and balance tables. Uh, both of those items um, are required to be in the plane. They're part of the ARO. If you remember right, ARO stands for Airworthiness Certificate, R for Registration, O for Operating Handbook, the Pot Operating Handbook, and the W for the weight and balance information. So that should be in the plane. You need a calculator and a sample weight and loading um, form. And we're going to get on to that sample weight and balance loading form a little bit later here. Key formulas to remember that need to sum up the total weight of the loaded aircraft. You need to do some multiplication to come up with the moments, and then you need to sum up all the moments and come up with an aircraft center of gravity by taking the sum of all the moments divided by the sum of all the weights. And we're going to give you an example next. So in order to calculate the weight and balance of an aircraft, we need the weights for the various items that are going to be on the plane, as well as the empty weight of the plane. And again, we need to um, either plan to use a calculator to do some multiplication and division, um, or we can also take advantage of any weight and balance loading graph tables that may be available in the pilot operating handbook. And again, we'll calculate the aircraft CG by dividing the sum of all the moments by the sum of all the weights. And then once we've determined the CG, we can look at the moment of envelope um, information in the pilot operating handbook and plot our CG point in that um, moment of envelope for the CG limits to see if, if we are indeed uh, within the safe operating range of the aircraft. So here's a simple um, table uh, showing a basic form for doing weight and balance. As you can see across the top, we have the weight, the arm, which is the distance away from the datum, the moment, which is the multiplication of the weight and the arm distance, and then the, the moment divided by a thousand year. Some operating handbooks will provide tables and charts that are based on a moment divided by a thousand. So all we did here is we just took the moment in pounds and then divided by a thousand to make the math a little bit easier. The items in red are the variables that we can enter as pilots. For example, the weight of ourselves and the passenger in the front, the passengers in the back, or any weight that's in the back seat, uh, fuel on board, and the baggage that we may have in the baggage compartment. We sum up all those weights. We do the multiplications here, and we sum up all the moments here. Um, and if we want, we can take that and divide by a thousand. So if you remember right, to come up with the center of gravity, it's the total moment divided by the total weight. And in this case here, we see a center of gravity coming out to be 88.77 inches. And then we take that center of gravity and we'll plot it in the table that's in the POH to make sure that our aircraft is indeed in the envelope for the weight versus the center of gravity envelope. And if it is, we're safe to fly the plane. It'll operate under all normal um, conditions. Um, any types of errors are usually associated with basically not reading the loading graph um, chart if there's a loading graph available, uh, not doing the math properly, um, or not um, putting the uh, center gravity point uh, placed properly in the table or the um, moment of envelope table. Um, <clears throat> this is just showing a Piper Warrior, and you can see that it made the datum here the, the tip of the nose. So some, most of the time with Skyhawks, um, they're located at the firewall. Other aircraft might be at the tip of the nose of the, the spinner. They could be at the mean um, cord line on the wing. So you really have to understand the POH to know where the datum is. Fortunately, um, they'll give some worksheets usually in the POH to help you along there. Uh, this is an example of a loading graph um, in the Piper Warrior so that we don't have to necessarily do all the um, multiplication. If we know, for example, the uh, front pilot and the passenger weigh 400 pounds, we can just come down here and we can get the moment. Notice it's divided by 1,000 um, by just picking it off the chart. So it makes filling out that previous table easier. And again, we need the loading lines for the pilot and the passengers, the aft passengers, the fuel on board, and the baggage. All four of those are listed here. Uh, this is right out of uh, the Pilot Operating Handbook for uh, a Piper Warrior. 
um, the basic empty weight. This will change. It, it's, you need to um, look at the particular weight and balance form for your aircraft based on the avionics or any other types of equipment that have been installed in the plane. So these numbers are, are, are going to be different for your aircraft. What will be constant are the arms for the uh, Piper Warrior. They'll be all the same here. Uh, the other variables will be the particular weights for the various uh, occupants, fuel, and baggage on board. So here's just the empty form here, and here is a chart, the weight versus CG envelope chart. So you can literally print these out, um, do the math, and then plot your CG point to see if you're indeed within this range. So this is a typical weight and balance worksheet that we use. Um, as you can see here, we have the basic empty weight that we get right out of the weight and balance information for the aircraft. Um, you can see in yellow, this stands for inputs that we're supposed to put in. Uh, the pilot in the left seat, the pilot seat in the right, which is usually passenger, your rear passengers, the baggage and the fuel. All these are variables that you can enter. And then the arms are fixed. And by multiplying the weights times the arms, we get the various moments. We sum up all the weights. We sum up all the moments. We take the moments divided by the weight and we get the arm. So this first row here is the max ramp condition weight. Often aircraft have a max ramp weight versus a max takeoff weight. Um, in the Piper Warrior, which is examples I've been using, um, the max ramp weight and takeoff weight are the same. The aircraft can take off at max ramp weight. Um, however, to do a weight and balance properly, we also need to account for some fuel burn associated with starting up the aircraft, taxing, and doing run-up. On average, about a gallon and a half will be used, maybe a little bit less, but in this example, I'm using a gallon and a half. Um, weight of a fuel is six pounds per gallon. So we basically have nine pounds that we're going to burn off in, in weight as we're taxing and, and doing a run-up. So that nine pounds times 95 equals 855. And so now we're going to subtract this weight from the initial max ramp condition to get our max takeoff condition. And similarly, we're going to subtract out the moment portion here with that less fuel uh, and come up with a slightly lighter uh, moment. And then we do the math again for the center of gravity. We take the moment divided by the, C, the, the weight here, and we come up with a new CG. You see it's actually gone forward a little bit. Then for this particular cross-country flight, we assume we went, let's say, 10. Uh, we burned 10 gallons of fuel in that flight. 10 times 6 pounds per gallon is 60. We're going to subtract that 60 from our takeoff rate to know what our landing condition is. And similarly, we're going to take that 60 pounds times 95 for the arm associated with the fuel tanks. That's 5,700. I'm going to subtract that from the max takeoff condition moment. And what we result in is we get a, a, a less weight when we arrive at our destination, 2,105 pounds, and a lighter moment or smaller moment. And we take the uh, moment divided by the weight, we get this arm of 89.91 inches. And what you can see, the arm is slowly moving forward as we lose more fuel. Um, to kind of wrap this up, we'll put the max ramp weight um, summary table here. We, we're going to put in the max uh, ramp weight of the 2174, the takeoff weight 2165, the max takeoff moment 195, and our CG 90.5. And then a landing, we're going to look at the new weight here. We're going to just place it in here, 2105, the moment, 189, 306, and then 89.1. Again, we'll plot the takeoff um, condition and we'll plot our landing condition, center gravities, to make sure both taking off and landing that the aircraft's within the CG limits. And then we'll just go ahead and date it, put our name in it, uh, sign it, and we'll specify the aircraft and the registration tail number. And that's it for filling out a weight and balance form. So that's why we care about weight and balance for an aircraft. And uh, that's how we basically go through the process of filling out a weight and balance form. And we want to do that for each and every flight that we go out on. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this video, just leave them below. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you get notified on my next video.